What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Honda Street Garage. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Honda Street Garage and today we're going to be talking about B20 VTEC tuning. You guys seem to really enjoy all the B20 VTEC stuff I've been putting out so we're just going to roll with it. On to the point at hand, we're going to be talking about B20 VTEC tuning, things to look out for, things to pay attention to when it comes to getting your engine and setup running right. Now last week in the last episode we talked about ECUs so if you need info on that go watch that video. So basically if you put together a stock block V20 with a VTEC head, you're basically going to need to run a Type R base map. Probably going to be your best bet. If you can go to a dyno tuner and tune it, you know, that's even better. The other thing I forgot to mention in the last video is, yes, the Honda S300 is a great choice and all Honda products are great. Um, I just completely forgot to mention those. This is going to be more or less getting your engine in the right tip top shape to perform the way you probably want it to. So with that being said, we're going to take a look at some things, you know, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to be talking about is ignition. If you have a B20 VTEC, you're running a Type R base map, the ignition can be a little bit uh, on the sketchy side. So with that being said, using a timing light is imperative if you know how to do that. You can Google that and look that up on how to use a timing light. But in general, the basics are if you notice, here we have a distributor, and if you notice, there's little slots in here. What those slots do is allow you to advance or retard the ignition timing. A very simple way to put it is that if you roll the distributor towards the radiator support, that is retarding the ignition, which means you are making the spark come in a little bit later, which is good. We'll get into that in a minute. If you rotate it back towards the firewall, that is advancing the ignition. That's basically like saying, where do you want your power? Do you want your power down low at low RPMs? Uh, then you kind of want to advance it a little bit. If you want your power at higher RPMs, then you want to retard it a little bit. But with B20 VTEX, you kind of want to stay on the safe side and actually retard the ignition more just to be safe because cruising speeds around three to 4,000 RPM, you want to make sure you don't have too much ignition. And if you hear a little pinging sound around that RPM while you're cruising, that's called detonation and detonation is not good. Basically detonation will eventually lead to mechanical failure. Detonation in a, in a little quick brief synopsis, just a, an idea, there's a lot of theory behind it, but basically it's lighting the exhaust gases on fire. Now that might sound like a good idea, but it's actually not. It's an uncontrolled explosion, so yada yada yada. Basically it's pre-igniting what's coming in before it's compressed, and that's not good. That'll eventually blow out your piston rings, and then those little piston ring pieces will fall into the block, they'll clog up an oil orifice, and then kaboom, you know, that's usually how it happens. So basically when it comes to LS VTEX, you should be on the safe side. Putting it in the middle, the distributor in the middle, if you have your engine time dead on, putting your distributor in the middle is a good safe spot. Maybe roll it towards the firewall, just a hair, just to be safe. Um, you can go to a tuner, put a timing light on it, and uh, make sure you're not getting too crazy with it, of course. But just to, just to get your engine started, get it running down the street, and you want to be safe, that's a good place to do it. Also, if you have idling issues that is going up and down, Distributor is actually one of the first places to look, as well as our next subject and topic. And they kind of go hand in hand. Now, a lot of people overlook this, which is the TPS sensor timing. Now, what is the TPS sensor? This is a throttle body. This is a TPS sensor. Now, from the factory, they are usually riveted on for American throttle bodies. And if they are riveted on to the throttle body, then you shouldn't have anything to worry about. If they're riveted on, they're timed. The JDM throttle bodies usually actually have these little star bolts where you can't adjust them. But if you notice, they put a little white mark on there that shows that it's been timed. Now, a lot of people will buy aftermarket throttle bodies and they'll buy aftermarket TPS sensors because a lot of times in shipping, your B20 or VTEC head or whatever, the TPS sensor will be broken. And this is a very open overlooked thing, mostly because the thing is, is that if it's not timed, it tells your computer where your gas pedal is. And without that, your engine is not gonna run properly. And so the TPS sensor and the distributor work hand in hand with idling issues, with acceleration issues, with a multitude of issues that can be confused if the TPS sensor and the distributor are just in the wrong place. If you want to know how to time a TPS sensor, that information can be found anywhere on Google. Basically, you get a voltmeter and you stick the prongs into the power, into the signal, and you get 
get 4.5 volts at wide open throttle and 0.5 volts with the throttle closed. Anyway, so once you have that time, the computer will know where the gas pedal is. So it will know when to fire the injectors. Uh, and then you have the distributor timing. So then you can fire the spark at the right time. So having these things obviously timed up properly is going to affect the drivability of the car, power delivery, a lot. Now another thing that you need to be aware of, if you have shaved the head or shaved the block to raise the compression, you have to understand on a B20 VTEC or LS VTEC, if you've done that at all, you are more prone to spark knock AKA detonation. Most likely you're gonna have to go get a tune from a tuner because around three to 4,000 RPMs, very difficult to uh, get detonation out uh, on a base map. Keep that in mind when you're building your engine and putting things together. So, you know, I've seen many builds where people shave the head like crazy, they rebuild the block, uh, they put a crappy ECU or just some standard base map with way too much ignition and their engine blows up after 2,000 miles and they don't know why. Being conservative with ignition and fuel is very important. So. If you advance your distributor, you're going to feel more giddy up and go in the lower RPMs, but you're actually going to strain your engine as you rev it out. But if you are more conservative, you retard the ignition, it will, it'll feel a little more torquey, not quite as quick in lower RPMs, but it'll really take off at higher RPMs. So it really depends on how you want the power delivery, what type of engine are you building? You know, are you doing it for drag racing? Are you doing it for street racing, road racing? Road racing, you kind of want a little more ignition because you're not going to rev out all the time. With drag racing, you're going to want to retard the ignition because you're going to want all the power at higher RPMs because you're going to be spending a lot of time there. Tuning your engine for the right setup is going to be the best thing you can do for the longevity of your motor and everything else because I know a lot of people out there, they want to build a motor, they want it to last, and there's a lot of confusion out there. Okay, so this is a LS VTEC engine. So we have our distributor here. Its timing is important, as well as the TPS sensors, timing is important. A couple of other tips to optimize what's going on uh, with your engine and how to make sure um, that it's running right. NGK wires are very important. If you just get cheap auto parts store wires, they tend to really give up and crap out very quickly. Also. NGK plugs are very important for the engine because Hondas are meant to run on those plugs. Don't go with anything else, Bosch. They just don't really do well. Fuel filter is a big one. Fuel filter can actually hinder the performance of the motor. One of the things about this car specifically, when we bolted it in, we started driving the car around, it felt oddly underpowered. We didn't know why. We weren't really sure at first. So the car ran fine, there was no check engine lights, but it just felt sluggish and we couldn't figure out why. So after swapping out plugs and wires and everything else, we noticed after we swapped the plugs that the plugs weren't white hot, meaning they're very crusty. There was hardly any black on the spark plugs. So that led us to believe that there wasn't quite enough fuel getting into the engine. Well, we changed the fuel filter nothing changed. Then it occurred to me that maybe the fuel pump is dying. Sure enough, we put a brand new fuel pump in this car and this car took off like a rocket. So keep that in mind as well is that sometimes you have problems that you don't get a check engine light for or anything like that. But performance is always going to be based off of fuel and spark. The more that you learn about fuel and spark, the better you're going to understand how an engine works and how to get the most out of it. And a lot of these tips go for any motor, not just B20 VTEX, D series, B 16. You're also going to need to run premium fuel with a B20 VTEC. Just about any dual overhead cam VTEC engine, you're definitely going to need to run premium. GSRs, B16s, Type Rs, all those are definitely going to need premium fuel. So also keep that in mind. I recently had someone, you know, send me a question about, I have a JDM B16 in my 93 Integra and he kept getting a knock sensor code and he couldn't figure out why. The wiring was good, the sensor was good. And once I told him, I asked him, I said, are you putting premium fuel in the car? And he said, no. It's like, well, that's why you're getting a knock sensor code because the octane is not up to the level of compression that the engine is. You know, these are generally high compression engines. That's why B20s and LSs actually have a lower compression because they're made to run on lower grade gas. Other issues with the fuel systems are the injectors, for example. Make sure you clean your injectors before you install them on the car. Uh, an easy way to do that is actually to take some injector cleaner, take a Q-tip, put it up inside the injector and twist it and clean it and get that needle moving. 
That usually keeps them clean, as well as the little tiny filters that are inside the injectors. That's a big factor. I've actually seen those clog up on engines and hinder the performance of them. As well as bleeding your coolant. Bleeding your coolant is quite important. Bleeding your coolant is super important for a number of reasons. You don't want your car to overheat, and that's kind of a different subject, but it will also affect idling issues. If you have uh, idling issues where it's like eh, eh, up and down idle, first thing to do is to make sure the coolant is bled. Once the coolant is bled, you check your distributor timing, and then if it's still doing it, check the TPS timing. Then it's still doing it, then you might have a problem with your air idle control valve. The thing about B20 VTEX and LS VTEX is that they require a little bit more oil than usual, usually about 4.2 quarts. So throw a little extra oil in there for love. I also like to use a bottle of Lucas with every oil change. A lot of you have already seen that. Also, another thing that can be overlooked is that with B20 VTEX and LS VTEX, oil, you do not want to run too thick because of usually the oil line coming into the head. Um, if you use oil that's too thick, it may actually take a while for VTEX to kick in because it can't get through that oil line. So usually somewhere 5W20, 5 5W30. Weights like 10W40 or 10W50 are usually too much. Keep that in mind when you're changing your oil and doing things for the first time. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Click subscribe, like, leave a comment below. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and if you need to get in contact with us about questions for your swap or any other info, you can contact us on our Facebook page. That's the best way to get to us. As far as the GoFundMe account goes, fuck it. Apparently I'm an asshole for even starting one. I'm not worried about it anymore. Thank you to every subscriber that has been with us for a while. Thank you to everyone out there that has uh, supported us, watched our videos. Big thank you goes out to you. You guys keep this alive. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video quite soon. Hopefully sooner than later. Appreciate it guys. Have a great day. Peace!